I have a very odd band. We were working on our, our fourth album. And then I tell my producer, I'm going in to get a heart operation. And it was like, well, we got to hold off on the album. Okay. So we did. There was a, uh, I don't want to even call it a condition, but a characteristic called SVT. And what happens is the heart beat um, practically doubles. We discussed different management options and he decided to proceed conservatively without having a procedure done at that time because his symptoms were not uh, particularly bothersome to him. But then he said to me, do you know you have a, um, an enlarged aorta? And I said, I'm in great shape. My weight, my blood pressure, no, all those kind of things. So he said, well, we'll keep our eye on it. Come back in six months. I said, yeah, I'll be there. I never went back. In January of this year, 2018, I was replacing some life insurance. The insurance underwriter said, get this guy a physical. So I go get a physical. And sure enough, the aorta is now larger. And that alerted us to the concern that this is a aneurysm that could potentially rupture. That his aortic valve, which is at the base of the aorta, needed to be replaced as well. Tom was referred to me for an ascending aortic aneurysm. Uh, he also had a bicuspid aortic valve and he had a narrowing of his aortic valve. He had something called aortic stenosis, which uh, sometimes comes hand in hand with the bicuspid valve. So I had a lot of confidence going into that room. I, had, I literally had no fear. We do all different incisions for, for the heart. In his case, he needed his breastbone open, and it, but, but we don't crack it, we don't break it. We, we cut it with a saw. It's very important to, to tell people when they're talking about heart surgery, it seems very gruesome and painful potentially. It's actually a pretty well tolerated incision. The first couple days, everyone feels a little beat up from any open heart operation. There's anesthesia, there's pain medicine, there's the trauma of, of, of opening the bone and separating the, but by the third, fourth, fifth day, most people are feeling pretty, I think, okay with it and they're not in excruciating pain. And I tell all my patients that about I would say 90 plus percent of our patients leave here on the fifth or sixth day after heart surgery not requiring any narcotic pain medicine. Discharge was, was great. And I had to make sure I could walk. I had to do a, go up a step. And I said to him, I'm not only going up that step, I'm coming down that step backwards. I'm the healthiest guy here. Tom had a very good attitude to uh, having surgery. He went through it. Uh, uh, with vigor and uh, enthusiasm. He exemplified how patients should uh, uh, rehabilitate themselves after they've had heart surgery. The operation was April 24th. I went back to my regular paying job on June 19th. I started the cardio rehab 18 sessions ago. It's, you know, on the treadmill, on the bicycle, on the arm thing, you know, this kind of thing. Getting to a cardiologist, first and foremost, is very important. Do you go when you're 40? Do you go when you're 45 or 50? A lot of it depends on family history. A lot of it depends on the patient in that, what are their risk factors? If you're a smoker, it's a risk factor. If you have diabetes, there's a risk factor. If you have obesity or high cholesterol, these are risk factors. Tom was the patient that is, was relatively asymptomatic. You know, he was functioning very well. He's an avid athlete, he's a musician, he was a vegetarian, he took care of his health. Uh, this is, there's nothing he did or these patients do to, you know, make this happen. I was the healthiest guy in ICU. The healthiest guy, the healthiest guy, the healthiest guy.